Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're going to be returning to Rogue State Revolution, a new game which just came out uh, yesterday? Uh, the 18th, I think. Uh, it is a political strategy game that puts you in the shoes of the president, a newly elected president, of a fictional sort of Middle Eastern country called Basenji. Uh, Basenji historically was a monarchy that was kind of ruled by a, by a family of kings, but sort of turned into a bit of a dictatorship. Uh, and in 2012, there was a revolution that overthrew that dictatorship. For the first five years after that, there was a provisional government, which I believe Rogue State 1 is sort of meant to represent that period of time where you're the provisional head of the government. Um, and now, uh, in this game, you are the newly elected, although... I guess technically it's 2022, so I'm not sure what the timeline is there. But in any event, you're the newly elected president of a democracy here. The first time this country has ever had a democracy. Uh, you're an underdeveloped nation that doesn't have a lot of prosperity, and you have a lot of challenges. You have a bunch of neighbors. You need to build the country's uh, sort of resources and infrastructure up, and you need to try and make your country's people more prosperous and that's uh, where we're picking up here we just finished the tutorial of the game and so um, we've successfully built uh, an oil refinery or I guess technically these are like oil wells and refineries uh, as well as a plastics factory and a processed food factory so we are drilling oil we are making plastics and we are processing food um, and that's the situation right now. Very early on, it's August of 2022, so we're about eight months into our first term. I believe you can be elected twice. So I think, I think you can play for like up to eight years or something like that. Invest in crypto. Well, in any event, um, you can see here, we're at the end of our August term, actually the beginning of our August term, we have four action points left, so we can do basically four things. I've got my surveyor down here who's looking for more oil deposits, not really finding anything. Um, although apparently there are like different resource deposits that are already identified in the game. I thought I had to send my surveyor to find them, but they do appear to be on the map already. So we got one in the north, uh, two in the north actually. So I think what my plan is gonna be is I wanted to survey everything to the west of this river here. So I'm just gonna send this guy back north toward one of the other objectives that we identified way up here in the north. And then we'll go ahead and see if we can't plop another. I'm assuming it's going to be an oil well, but those question marks don't always pan out. Interesting that it started the turn with those question marks being there, and now they're gone. <laughs> Not sure about that. Uh, in any event, our surveyor is working his way back up that way. We have a facilities inspector who helps reduce corruption and other things like that. Um, and so I kind of feel like, I mean, we've already reduced corruption in these three factories I kind of feel like we need to get them all the way over here where we've got another oil well and a, and a power plant out here in the east. But that's a long hike to send that inspector out that way. Maybe we just purchase a new inspector. We have three military units, which helped us sort of destroy some insurgents. Actually, four military units. We've got a unit of mortar troops, a unit of infantry, airborne, and armor. We're going to go ahead and send our armor off to the east we're going to go ahead and send our... And, and because the game kind of recommends you send your, your military units a little bit over the map because there are insurgents that you have to deal with, the BLF force or the Basinji Liberation Front. But I don't want to keep my infantry and uh, mortars too far apart because they kind of they kind of need each other. But maybe I'll do just that. The mortars are pretty damn powerful at range. So we're just spreading our military out. Also, I think it does help increase internal security by having your military sort of spread out a little bit. So that's what we'll do. Um, currently, we are producing 124 food, which meets our immediate demand. Um, actually, we're producing 54, and then our UN aid camps are producing 72. UN aid camps are not terribly popular within our country, but I also need them because I don't have enough domestic agriculture food production. So I probably should build some more farms to kind of help with that. Um, I was going to build sort of a farm hub, wasn't I? Where was that? Was, There's a little bit of a valley around here somewhere. I can't even remember where I put my farms. I know I placed them somewhere. There's a village here. I guess it doesn't really matter where I put them. Oh, are they down here? Yeah, this is the one farm down here. So let's go ahead and build another farm. 
Uh, right now, our in, our economic health is basically our our ba- our, ba- our budget is balanced perfectly with 121 income and 121 expenses. Uh, so I'm not really building up more reserves to get more cash or whatnot, but we're going to go ahead and build not roads. We're going to go ahead and build a new agricultural field. So you can see, obviously, there's a whole bunch of different buildings you can build, seaports, smelters, manufacturing plants, oil refineries, power plants, nuclear reactors, hospitals, airports, all these other things that help improve the life of your people. But we're going to go ahead and build a, another agricultural field because we need more we need more freaking food. And you have to build these in, in grasslands, areas where the, the map is green. So I do need a little bit more, a little bit more food. And actually, because this is immediately adjacent of this village and this other farm field, I believe it has access to a road already. So I don't even need to build a new road because it looks like they connect directly to this village. We will connect the village to the roads though. And so I think those two actions here, that should give me a better food situation. Hey, bird. Thanks for the support, dude. Appreciate the kind words. Um, this is a new stream. We just start. Uh, this isn't a new stream time. Sorry. Uh, I took today off of work, frankly. So I, I had some time to do a stream. But I, this is not something I can uh, I can sustain in any, any mean. Anyway. Um, all right, so that's that. What else do we want to do here? So we also do probably need some intelligence. Uh, we don't have an intelligence facility yet, but we probably do want to build one eventually. Right now, what it wants me to do is process 80 foods a turn or train an intelligence agent. That's sort of our next objective. Damn, my foreign time zone. Sorry. All right, so if we were to build an intelligence facility, I kind of feel like it should be in one of these... These three states, either Kirak, Kirif, Kirif, and Rumi, because they're all three the least prosperous here. That's what this little three means. They also have the most available workers, 23 available here. The Karifi are also sort of the ethnic minorities within the country, so I think there's some political elements to that as well. But let's go ahead and build... How expensive is an intelligence facility? I'm assuming it's not cheap. 60. It's also going to increase our overhead, though, too. It's going to cost... I think one upkeep per turn? It'll reduce liberal approval, but it'll increase public safety and conservative approval. Let's hold off on that for a little bit. Uh, I'm actually in uh, Illinois. I grew up in Wisconsin, though. All right, so what else do I want to do? That's the problem is, like, you're limited to how many actions you can take in a given turn, but I don't really know, like, I guess we should connect this road with our neighbor here in Krajikistan because we have no connection with them, apparently. So we'll do that, and we'll go ahead and upgrade the road so that it's, you know, a paved road. So now we have, we can, in theory, trade with these folks. Do I have borders with everybody else or road connections with everybody else? It looks like it. Madison is nice. Um, Birdmania, thank you very much for the, the sub. Appreciate it, sir. Or madam. All right, so... I mean, I feel like I'm wasting wasting action points if I don't do anything, but I don't know that I want to spend a ton more money by, like, constructing things. Uh, seaport does help prosperity. Boats come in and go with containers full of everything imaginable, inclu including contraband. So it takes up six workers, ten power. There is some upkeep, but it does increase prosperity. Where would we want this? So, probably along the coast, obviously. Build it in the middle of the desert. All right, so that ate up a bunch of our money and potentially will cost us some cash and upkeep, but I'm assuming 
that the benefits will outweigh the outweigh the cost. Build that road. All right, so it's now connected via roads. Also, these villages are connected. And then, given it is a seaport, I imagine we probably want to upgrade those roads. Spending all my money on whatever. But so that seaport should allow us to bring in some extra cash. Also, we can smuggle contraband goods. We can turn that on, acquire parts needed to comp pay, complete some clandestine projects like nuclear weapons, I'm guessing. In any event, it, it does give you a big up uh, upswing in prosperity, so that should help uh, this community here that is less prosperous. Actually, it does look like their prosperity has already increased from three to four. I'm not sure what that'll do to my income in the following turns. What else do I want to do? Let's check out the different ministers. We're working on infrastructure renewal, state investments, long-range anti-air-to-surface missiles, and extended runways. Okay. But I think... I mean, I'm, I guess I'm just going to waste this, this action point. I'm not sure what else to do with it. Change of policy direction, I don't want to do that. Adjust my provincial expenses, don't really want to do that. Engage in diplomacy, maybe. I mean, I guess we could work on exporting our processed foods just because my people right now don't demand it. So why don't we do that? Let's go to diplomacy. And who needs processed foods? It looks like... Nobody? Exports, exports, exports. They all export processed food. Nobody wants processed foods. None of my neighbors demand it in this playthrough. Well, that sucks. Huh. So the game told me to make processed food. I guess we could do plastics. Does anybody demand plastics? Luxury goods, oil. No. Well, fuck. What am I supposed to do with my processed foods? Greetings, Excellency. My name is Prime Minister Gazimir. Uh, oh my goodness, Gazima Farah of Babelstan, and I wanted to congratulate you on your recent election. I know Basenji has a grand future ahead of it, and I look forward to cooperating with you in the future on matters of mutual interest. Well, they need food. In theory, they could buy plastics. I guess. All right. Well, give me a little bit of cash to sell them some plastics. So with that being said, let's end the turn and move forward to September of 2022 and see what happens. Excellency, some geocachers exploring a mountain range just stumbled upon a deeply disturbing find, a mass grave inside a cave network, estimated to be at least 20 years old. There's several hundred bodies that have been uncovered so far, mostly Karifi. We need to reunite our people with the remains of their loved ones. That reduces Karifi approval in Basenji by 8%. We can't afford to agitate tensions. Keep this find suppressed for now. So how do the Karifi find out? Oh, it's possible. So basically I have to gamble either that we're okay letting them know about the mass graves, in which case the approval of me apparently, despite the fact that I was obviously not in power, I guess it's just sort of general dis dis disillusionment with the country. Or if we try to hide it, then nothing happens immediately, but there's a possibility of a massive reduction in approval uh, of the Karifi in Basenji. So a chance or certainty? Hmm. What do you guys think we should do? My gut says 
go with a chance. I'd rather a possibility of no change versus a massive hit, you know, rather than the certainty. But I, I don't want to hedge Admiral Akbar's. I don't feel like hedging anyway. Yeah, it doesn't tell me the chance. Well, I mean, you wouldn't know the chance in real life, right? You're all saying one. You all want to go with the for, for sure... You all are just too nice. You're just like, oh, we're going to be transparent. Blah, blah, blah. Fine. The welfare of your conservative citizens is something that we remain concerned about. We urge you to increase their approval. Who the hell are you? Prime Minister of Axtijan. Um... They're, cons they're, uh, they're concerned that our approval levels among conservative citizens are too low. I don't really know why they care so much, but they're asking us to do right by them. So this is a country that we've got polite relations with. Uh, they're a stable nation, and they want me to appease my conservative base. My answer to them is probably, who the hell do you think you are interjecting yourself in our internal affairs? And uh, no, screw that. It will reduce our relations with these folks slightly by about 4%, but we still have polite relations with them. So not a major um, impact to our, our overall relations with those folks. All right, let's go ahead and send our surveyor. I wonder if there was a glitch where I could see all the different question marks about like oil or resources at the start of the stream, because <laughs> it's all gone now. Excellency. Oh, well, now it shows up. So these must just be like ideas where they're like, maybe there's something there. In any event, we're gonna go ahead and send him north toward this other question mark. It only shows up when I click on him. So that's, I guess that makes some sense. Bill Spalm, thank you very much for the follow. Excellency. Meanwhile, our infantry brigades and our mortars. So we keep moving these guys north. I'm gonna get them up in this other province over here. This armored brigade is going to cross the bridge into the province here further to the east. My airborne unit will head more off to the east as well. I guess we'll just kind of keep these mortar troops around this, this these two cities, if you will. And then this infantry stays there. Facilities inspector. State inspection. All right, now that you did your inspection, get up toward the other facilities here on the other side of the country. We're really going to need another facilities inspector. All right, so we are at five, five, four, three, and 3. Lord Luba, thank you very much for the follow. Um, incomes, at, we're still at 42. Our budget is a slight positive budget. We're gaining $2 more per month than we are um, spending at the moment. We are producing all of the food that we need. 109 locally, 72 in UN camps. That does give us a bit of a surplus. Can we sell that? For a little bit of extra cash? I mean, I could destroy another UN camp. I think that would that would help from a popularity perspective, but it does recommend waiting a little bit, so I want to wait till next year to do that. So let's see if anybody demands food. It probably isn't worth very much, but these guys demand food. Babelstan. Um, anticipated export capacity. Can I not export UN food, I'm guessing? In any event, so 136 out of 136, I mean, that means I've got a surplus of over 30. So what if I get rid of one of these? These guys produce 18. It reduces the prosperity, and I think these are... I don't know what the squiggle lines are, but I think those are two different political parties. So we'll go ahead and get rid of this UN camp. 
It is a lower your diplomatic influence for approximately seven months. So we'll we'll do that, and then we'll have to wait till next year to do another one. Meanwhile, apparently that helps my economy. Well, I guess it, it was hurting prosperity, so I suppose that could be like an investors don't exactly like that you're, you know, receiving aid or something. <laughs> Serge, you open up the the stream and it's like, oh, okay, we're getting rid of those UN camps. Like, yeah, they're interfering in our in our internal affairs, right? It also does apparently help our budget a bit. We've got a, a six budget surplus now. I don't quite understand that logic, but okay. Again, probably has to do with prosperity and things. What's our uh, popularity right now? 39% in the entire country uh, approve of our rule. Although they have an approval rating of 41%, but it says 39% here. That doesn't make any sense. I guess the Basenjis have a 31%. The Korifis used to like me a lot more, but we, we you know, we revealed the fact that their, their slain relatives were found in a in a cave. The squiggly line, by the way, was the Basenjis, so they don't like the fact that, or they don't like the fact that UN camps are there, so by getting rid of that, that should improve my popularity. Also, apparently improves my popularity with the Karifis, but I would have thought they would have liked the UN um, assistance, given that they're um, a minority group in our country, and I assume the UN would benefit them. What's my goal? To uh, get re-elected. Re How much of my country do I control? The whole country. Not the countries around us, though. I wonder if we can go to war with them over, like, resources and stuff. Not sure. All right. So, how are our different cabinet ministers doing? We're still working on extending the runways, long-range ASMs, state investments, and infrastructure renewal. All that stuff's underway. We have an objective. Produce 80 processed foods a turn. We're producing 45 at the moment. We're exporting 18 of our plastics. Um, mainly because we're using, we've got more plastics than we need, I think, at the moment for our manufacturing plants. So, looks like what I need more of is food. I hate the idea of just like, let's just keep building agricultural fields. Like, that doesn't seem like the road to prosperity. But sure, why not? Um, construction. Uh, 30 gold. We've got that. All right. All right, so we built a third agricultural field down here in the south. It's linked with these two villages down here in Saba. And that should help our... Oh, we're low on power. At present, we have rolling brownouts to contend with. Fuck. Wasn't paying attention to my electricity demand. Uh, how expensive is another power plant? I don't have the cash. It's 45 gold. The environment doesn't like it, though. It's a very minor brownout situation. Let's see what uh, what the next turn has in store for us in, in those regards. You'd say spread the farms out? Eh. Sell drugs, it's the easiest way to become a healthy rogue state. <laughs> I don't know about that. Which province is this again? Rumi? Which doesn't have great prosperity, so I would have thought building... I guess it just doesn't help prosperity to build more farms. But getting rid of this UN camp will. Again, I can't do it for a few more months, though, so perhaps that was unwise. Uh, we could take a loan, issue bonds. So borrow 200 gold from private lenders with a promise to repay it over a year and a half at 17% interest. It's $13 a month in interest. That's a lot of interest. 
makes sense that we have high interest loans, though, given you are a, you know, uh, a less prosperous nation. But that will allow me to go ahead and build a new power plant. Interesting that nuclear power is far more efficient from a power perspective and a cost perspective. You produce more than th almost three times more power for less than three times the cost. Just slightly half more labor, although the upkeep's more. You do require uranium, though. Doesn't hurt the environment to do it, though. Go ahead and put the power plant up here. And then build some roads here. We'll upgrade those roads too. All right, so the environmental folks up here aren't going to like me because of that new power plant. But we do have excess electricity now. Our budget's in trouble, so I'll we'll have to figure out how to solve that. But with the $200 loan, I can repay my loan with my loan for a little while anyway. Negative 12 per turn at the moment. So we're going to have to figure out how to get a little bit more cash. Or we may be in trouble. That being said, let's move ahead to the next month. Can I sell power to my neighbors? I don't know. Makeshift shelters of corrugated steel and salvage debris line the outskirts of our major cities as shanty towns start to appear in response to the severe homelessness crisis gripping Basenji. We can construct new apartments for the homeless and demolish any, the shanty towns. That impre increases liberal approval by 5%, possible. Also, it improves the environmental quality in Basenji by 1. It costs 50 gold. We can increase the number of homeless shelters and food banks, which makes conservatives like me less. Um, it also means there's a possibility, although it's unlikely, of uh, plus one Basenji, and it's very likely that liberals will like it. It's only 20 gold. We can draft the homeless into the army. I get three infantry units, but nobody's really a big fan of that, um, except for maybe the conservatives, or do nothing. So I think I'm going to spend the money, get the certain environmental quality improvement, and then also potentially the liberal approval improvement. Okay, so we get the liberal approvement as well, uh, uh, approval, and we get the environmental bonus. So you can see the environmental bonus goes up by one in every province. That was pretty sweet. Although we did spend money that we don't really have. We're going to have to figure out how to, how to save some cash there. If we go to the demographics, you can see the whole nation still only has a 39% approval rating of me, unfortunately. But the Basenji approval rating has gone up slightly. Not sure how to get that approval rating to go up a little bit more. Excellency. All right. Get you up there to this question mark. Yes. All right, get over to that power plant. It's going to take eight turns for my inspector to get over there. Airborne, where the hell are you? Excellency. Go find us some BLF. Excellency. All right. How's our food situation now? We're producing 164 food. So to me, that feels like we're producing all the food we need, right? But I, I need to wait a little while to demolish more UN camps. Meanwhile, we're now producing up to 66 processed foods in our manufacturing plants. We're not, we would be producing more, but we're not because of the, um, the oil is not, I don't have enough oil yet. Can I do more exports? Can we can we look at doing that? Again, nobody wants and no one that I can see anyway wants um my 
processed foods. Uh, does anybody else? Well, I don't have any plastics for you, sir. Damn it. Yes, killing the homeless may not be advisable. All right, well, I don't want to spend more money that I don't have. So I think we'll just let this turn pass without doing anything. Yeah, I know. Make the most of your action points. Well, I don't really want to. Excellency. These numbers represent yes, I know. People don't have orders. Can we just move forward to the next month? All right, so our, we only took a little bit of a, of a hit economically that turn. Right, we'll keep moving those choppers east. Move those infantry here. So this mortar's guarding these two towns. These infantry's guarding these. The palace is also located here, so makes sense to have a little bit stronger military force around there. Surveyor is on his way up to the question mark, but we'll go ahead and manually move him up there to see if maybe we can do a survey. See if there's oil here. Excellency. I discovered a deposit of oil. Hell yeah. All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and construct a new oil refinery here. That'll cost some cash, obviously, but... That's fine. All right, let's go ahead and build some roads. Go ahead and upgrade those roads. I don't know if I really need to upgrade that road. That was probably a waste of a, a few bucks. But with that extra oil, we will now have enough, I think, oil to get us up to 80 processed foods. America wants to know my location. America already knows my location. The previous, all right, we'll get you up. It's gonna take you five turns to get up there to that next que question mark. What about over here? How many five turns to get here into the middle of nowhere? All right. Well. Hmm. Six turns down here. Five turns here. Five turns here. Five turns here. All right, let's get you up to the top here. It's going to be five no matter what, and then we'll kind of work our way back down. Okay, so more oil should be good for the economy, right? Negative three right now. We're exporting three dollars worth of stuff. What are we exporting anyway? It, doesn't, it says zero for everything, but apparently we still have international exports of three. Okay. Meanwhile, food is more than adequate at the moment, but again, I can't. I don't want to demolish more of those aid camps until probably around June of next year. Um, Excellency. sure. Yeah, I could do that. So I use the action point to move the surveyor more quickly since I don't have anything else going on. And then let's also do that for the uh, facilities inspector. Can't find her. Yes. Right. Oh, I don't have any more action points, so we'll have to wait on that one. All right, so... I think we've got two military units that haven't moved. They're just the mortar Excellent. troops, though. I don't know, like, what else would I do with them? I don't really want them to move. It would be interesting if you could train them to, like, be better. You can promote them, but I don't see a train option. All right. Let's go ahead and fast forward to December. Civilians at work. Okay. You enter your office and find an unsealed envelope sitting on your desk. The note is unsigned and reads, You're not the only one caught in a loop. Huh? Okay. That's a little ominous. The welfare of your Karifi citizens is something that we remain concerned about. We urge you to increase their approval. 
I can't promise that I'll increase their approval, but I'll try. Yes. Excellency. All right, so we'll inc Ooh, wow, he's getting it almost all the way up there. So I used two of my points doing that. Meanwhile, our budget is now positive. If we take a look at the budget here, we're turning a profit of four, and that's with the outstanding loan. Um, that Where'd that extra money come from? We got a little bit more in food. Producing 49. We really only have a surplus of 49 food? Music is kind of fire. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Um, how are my ministers doing, by the way? Apparently my natural resources minister has just vanished because um, she's an addict, so she just goes missing sometimes. My other ministers are all almost done with their R&D for extending the runway, which will improve urban approval as well as legal Im immigrant approval. It will cost us one per turn. Long-range ASMs will also cost us one per turn and state investments will open up new options in the budget menu to allow you to invest treasury surpluses and secure the future of our people. Part of me wants to do like the let's counterfeit American dollars, but that seems like maybe a bad idea. Uh, minimum wage. No minimum wage. Guaranteed minimum wage. Ooh, that's expensive. When am I going to start nuclear weapons programs? Uh, maybe, eventually? I don't know. Oh, shoot. I didn't want you to move there. No. No. Just move back to where you were. All right, so... Surveyor's moving around. I guess we can expedite this air group. I don't really know where to send him. Next, Chowy. Thank you very much for the follow. Okay, do I want to build anything else? We could build another agricultural field. Looks like our current fields are producing 161. Our city's demand fits 166. Um... in that little agricultural valley down there in the south. This is like our agricultural hub, if you will. What is this? Health 2. Shit. Saba is not healthy. Well, you guys, it's a pretty rural province, too. We could use a hospital or something. Maybe we'll look at doing that next turn. We'll end the turn, move forward to 2023, the next year. Civilians at work. You run. Run to go inspect stuff. Or find more oil. Just do what get off you. Uh, Excellency, I should remind you that next month marks the fifth anniversary of the Basenji Revolution. You will, of course, be expected to make a public statement. Are there other events you'd like to plan with this historic day? Well, we could have done a festival, which would have made everybody love me, but the problem is I don't have a stadium, so that we could do a military parade celebrating our victory, which increases the loyalty of military units, also potentially increases entertainment in Basenji, and makes the conservatives like me, or cl close all businesses and hold a day mourning for those lost. That increases the loyalty of the military units. We might as well spend the 10 gold to give us a possibility of an increase in entertainment. So we didn't get the entertainment bonus, but we did get the conservative approval bonus and the loyalty of the military. Okay, objective complete. Infantry brigade. So we've exported 80 processed, or we've produced 80 processed foods. And our cities are starting to demand some. So that is a object. That is a complete objective. And then we got a free infantry unit for doing that. What's going on over here? Why is this red? 
Some towns are starting to demand processed food. Okay, well, we've, we've, we're producing it, so that should be good. Meanwhile, the economy, if we take a look at the budget, we're, we're actually turning a seven surplus, so that loan seems to have really worked out for us. If we go to the finance minister, you can see new options in the budget menu allow you to invest treasury surpluses and secure the future of our people. So we can actually invest treasury funds in state investments, which is what you just saw on the budget screen over here. So you can see the investments, you can invest gold in risky hedge funds or in safer annu annuities. So, you know, if we wanted to put money into hedge funds, you know, maybe invest in, in subprime mortgages, we would get between two and five gold a month. Investments can be devastated by events. Um, so you can in invest more and more over time to sort of generate extra cash. But over time, maybe those investments could be lost. Safer annuities produce 24 extra gold a year. Wow. And the investments won't fall apart. So they're cheaper or they're more expensive to do, but you get 24 a year. Why wouldn't I? Okay, so if you got five a month, then that could be up to 60 a year. So it could pay substantially more, but it's risky. That's interesting. Are we earning seven billion or seven Bitcoin? I, I don't know. It's it's abstracted in some way. Masenji bucks, yeah. They're kind of like Shroot bucks. All right, so we completed the construction of long-range ASMs, giving my attack helicopters plus one range. And we completed the extended runway, improving the, I think, prosperity and urban approval. Or, I guess, legal immigrant approval and urban approval. So that means now we need to give new re research priorities for the ministers, or we can let them decide on their own. Um, our natural resources minister, by the way, isn't quite done with infrastructure renewal, but you can see finance. What do we want to do next with finance? Well, we could do offshore banking, which increases our money, but reduces international security. It does improve prosperity, however, as well as legal immigrant approval. Reform your banks so that they protect assets from lawsuits, ensure financial privacy, and shield money from taxation from other countries. This will make Basenji an attractive destination for rich foreigners to hide their money. The prosperity piece is interesting. We could regulate cryptocurrency, which reduces prosperity, but improves um, our income a little bit. I don't know that I want to reduce my prosperity. Tax credits permits greater financial investment in the provincial businesses, subsidies, budget than previous limits. We could do super notes, which is mass producing high quality counterfeit United States $100 bills in bulk to gradually increase our treasury. If we get caught, however, we're in big trouble. Uh, we could prohibit unions. We could workers compensation, legalize youth labor, food truck permits, repeal overtime laws. So, if we repeal overtime laws, it improves prosperity? What's the definition of that? For who? <laughs> prosperity for the rich, I guess. Relax building codes. Public safety goes down, but prosperity goes up. Again, for who? Uh, international security? So what is the diplomacy situation here? International security is a six which means it's tied to the rate at which rebel insurgents will appear in Basenji. If the people are unhappy, a lower rating will result in more rebels, while a higher rating will hinder rebel recruitment efforts. Basenji makes great strides in securing its borders and addressing the threat of international terrorism. Still more can be done. Provide so right now, we're relatively stable. Um... Holy shit, it wants me to get their approval up to 49%? It said increase it. It didn't say increase it by 15%. Jeez. That seems like a little bit much. Um, I really don't know what to do here. Tax credits? I guess... I mean, that doesn't hurt anything in that sense. So I guess we'll do tax credits. It just opens up more opportunities. I'm not sure. You know, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, national defense. So we've done long range ASMs. We could do chemical weapons. Mortar units deliver plus one damage against infantry units. 
activating this unlockable will result in extreme sanctions from the international community. Let's not do that then. Anti-tank missiles? I guess that'll make my infantry much better against enemy armor. Probably only relevant if we get invaded by our neighbors. Veterans benefits, expensive, but military units will become more loyal. Mm. Manchurian candidate, advanced centrifuges, recon training. Yeah, let's... Let's do anti-tank missiles. Yeah, there's a mech too. Research the anti-tank missiles, please. From a development perspective, we can do toll roads, which increases revenue, but rural approval goes down as well as entertainment. A bus fleet, which improves environment, urban approval, and liberal approval. Conservatives aren't a fan of that. Electric charging stations. Removes speed limits. That increases the entertainment. <laughs> uh, spaceport, transportation hub. Can't build that yet. Um... Spectrum auction. I think that's kind of amusing as someone who works in the wireless industry that it would increase entertainment. Mm. This cannot possibly fail. Yeah, I'm guessing there's, you know, a whole public health safety thing. Uh, I guess rural internet access, entertainment, and rural approval. I'll do that. I can't do that? Or can I do that? Yeah, let's do that. Rural internet access. Hell yeah. And then natural resources, we have to finish doing that. So does our sur surveyor get up there this turn? I think he will if we give him that action point here. So I keep using all my, my uh, action points up on letting my guys have really long range. Yeah, you can scroll down, Vents, for some areas. You can't scroll down for every single minister's area. All right, survey. I discovered a deposit of oil. You know what that means. We're going to build more oil wells. Oh, I can't afford it. I don't have enough gold. Well, we can afford it next turn, I think. Excellency. And the surveyor can still move, so he's going to move toward this other area. Give her the extra range as well. Yeah, some options have the... Some some sectors, so like development, you can scroll down. But I do like the rural internet access. It is a little bit expensive, but it massively improves rural approval as well as entertainment. That's a good thing. Um, military, for whatever reason, you can't scroll down. I'm surprised there aren't more options for that. Maybe you can unlock more options with different different... Policies, I'm not sure. Natural resources, you can't scroll down. Finance, you can't scroll down. So it looks like it's just development at the moment. Meanwhile, we do have a health problem in Saba. I do want to build a hospital down that way. Also, let's take a look at road congestion. So there is a little bit of congestion between Suldia and Majumara. You can see the roads are yellow here, so that can improve, that can impact things. Heavy congestion down here. These roads are already upgrade. Oh, these are dirt roads. That's why. We'll, we'll upgrade these roads. All right, that should improve the... Uh, well, I'm assuming it'll improve after this turn anyway. So let's go ahead and move forward to the next turn, I think. Is there anything else I want to do at the moment? I don't... I mean, I've got one more action point, but I don't have... I don't need three infantry down here. All right, everybody, and that's going to do it for our second video on a new game, a new political strategy game called Rogue State. Uh, we are doing okay, I think, so far. We introduced sort of diplomacy and international relations in this particular episode, a lot of import-export policies, free trade, and what have you. But overall, I think we're doing okay. We're hanging in there. We're not super popular, but we've got a while before our next election to go ahead and try and, you know, get people to like us and, and win an election. And I'm really focused on turning the economy around and really building things up and building a prosperous Basenji. And we'll worry about the niceties of ruling as we get a little bit closer to the election. But 
until the next election. This is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. And as always, until next time, I'm out.